Hi, this is John Galloway with Microsoft. We're up to part three of the MVC Music Store tutorial, looking at views and view models. In part one, we overviewed the application, installed Visual Web Developer Express, and created a new MVC2 application. In part two, we created two controllers and wrote some simple controller actions, which just wrote strings out to the browser. That's a great way to get an idea of how controllers work, but it, of course, it's not how you'd really build a complete web application. We need a better way to handle our HTML instead of strings. We want to split those out to a separate template, and that's exactly what views do. We're going to be converting our home page to a view, but before we do that, we'll want to add a CSS style sheet and a master page to our site. ASP.NET master pages allow us to set a template for common user interface elements that we'll use across the entire website. They're similar to include files, but a lot more powerful. Since the master page is shared by all pages in the site, we'll add it to the View Shared folder. The MVC2 empty website project includes an empty shared folder, so we're going to right click on that and select Add, and then we'll say New Item. We can filter our list down to just show MVC2 applications, and we're going to pick an MVC2 View Master page. We'll call our master page Site.Master. So we'll type that name in and click the Add button. The MVC2 empty project template includes an empty style sheet. We're going to want to reference this on all pages in our site, so we want to add it to our master page. An easy way to add a reference to our CSS file into our master page is just to drop it directly onto the master page source. Now that's going to add an absolute link, and we're going to want to make that relative, so we can just delete that. Alternatively, you could just type this text in. One great use for master pages is to add in common navigation elements. So far, we have two main areas of our site, home and store. So we'll add an unordered list with those navigation elements into the header. These are just HTML links at this point. Later, we'll be looking at some MVC helper methods that will generate this HTML for us. Now we're ready to add a view template. Let's save our changes to this file and go back over to our home controller. Our home controller originally returned an action result, and we changed it to return a view just for illustration purposes. So let's change it back to return an action result. And we'll change the method to call return view. That's going to be calling a helper method inside of the controller class, which we're inheriting from. Now we can make use of a handy shortcut in Visual Studio to create a view for us based on this model. We can right click on our controller action and select add view. There's also a keyboard shortcut for this, control M, control V. You can think of that as make view. This brings up the add view dialog. By default, the dialog pre-populates the name so that it matches the controller action method. Since we've already got a master page set up for the site, it also pre-fills that value for us. That's the reason we created the master page first. When we click the Add button, Visual Studio creates the new index.aspx view template for us, and it puts it in the slash view slash home directory. Notice that it created the folder since it didn't already exist. Both the file name and the location are important. They follow a convention. We're continuing to see how ASP.NET MVC uses a lot of conventions to simplify things. So instead of wiring up things in code or in a configuration class, there's just an understanding that when we browse to the home page of our site, we're going to be using the home controller, and that home controller is going to be using a view located in a folder with the same name as the controller and using a view template that has the same name as the controller action. We're taking advantage of these both when we develop and also when the application is running. So let's look at this view template that we've created. Notice that it's very simple. We've got two content placeholders and these match up to our site master. So for instance, we've got a title content which contains the word index. If we look for a content placeholder named title content in our site master, we'll see that's right up at the top. So that content is going to be substituted into this title tag. Let's update the title to say home, and we'll change the page heading to say this is the home page. 
Now let's run the application and see how our changes look on the home page. Let's review what's changed so far. The home page is using our master page template, so the header content, including our links, is displaying. Also, the home controller's index action method found and displayed the correct view template, even though our code just called return view because the view template followed the standard naming convention. A view template that just displays hard-coded HTML isn't going to make for a very interesting website. To create a dynamic website, we're going to need to pass information from our controller action to the view templates. One common technique is to use a view model, which allows us to cleanly package all the information our view template is going to need to display. Let's see this in action by changing our store index page to list the number of genres we carry, so it looks like this. We'll create a view model directory to hold our view models by right-clicking the project and selecting Add New Folder, then naming the folder View Models. Now we just pick that name for our folder. We can name the folder anything we want, so there are places where conventions are important for controllers, models, and views, but we can create any other folders we want in our project to organize it as we'd like. Now we'll create a view model for our store index page. Right-click on the View Models folder and select Add Class. Name the class Store Index View Model and press the Add button. We'll create an integer property named Number of Genres and a list of strings to handle the genres. I'm using a Visual Studio snippet, PROP, to add those properties.